Hi, and welcome to my review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 Kids TV series. In this, I like to talk about the different characters, the storylines, and the overall artwork and just series itself. I will do individual blogs that will match up to different episodes, favorite episodes, things like that along the lines. But first, I want to touch my thoughts on the 4 Kids series as a whole. The thing that made the 4 Kids series as good as it was for me is definitely the storyline. We have a story from the beginning of the series all the way to the end of the series. That could have kept going. In fact, I wish it could because there's still so much more they could do with the 4 Kids series. We have a story behind Splinter that is different than any of the other storylines. We have a story of how the turtles meet the foot, which is different. The underlying story has always been there. That made it so if you watched the series back to back, you could enjoy it a lot. Then there's the artwork. For the most case, the first five seasons had about the same type of artwork, which really flowed, that looked good. It was like eye candy for the fans. If we took still art, we could make it into posters and enjoy it. And then we got fast forward and back to the sewer. Artwork is still good, it's just a different style, a lot of people are not happy about it, but there are some people out there who do enjoy both of those lighter styles from Fast Forward and Back to the Sewer. And of course, the story has to wrap around characters, as well as the artwork. And the characters are one of the most important things that make a show. So we have the four lead characters, Leo, Raph, Don, and Mike. They focus too strong on Leonardo in this series. From beginning to end, Leo had the most character development, most screen time, the most episodes. It was Leo, Leo, Leo. They would try and throw Michelangelo in as the comic relief, but they didn't have him get the, as much character growth as he should have had as well. And when they jumped into Fast Forward and Back to the Sewer, they took all that character growth from seasons one through five and just threw it away. So there's definitely some some character issues, but not much, because when they did use all the turtles together, they kept them pretty much in sync. So we have Leo as the leader, Raph competing against that and being his temperamental self, but also being the self that is conflicting within. So he has his own issues as well, where he's realizing his anger. Then we have Don, who's completely into his computer stuff, kind of the quiet one off to the side and just enjoying himself but also trying to stay true to any promises that he's made and protect his family as well. And we got Mike who is the comic reader, the artist, the writer. Um, they didn't show too much of that side of him in the series but they did show that he is a big comic book fan and that he has learned from comic books. So we have each of the turtles together in the series. Some with some very important roles for the full series, others where they had their standalone episodes. Leo, too many episodes to start with, like going all the way to Shredder Strikes. Right away, it's like Leonardo has the main storyline with Shredder. Uh, Raph, he's got his stories like when he's with um, Lone Raph and Cub, where he's got to help and he's blind, which kind of disappointed me because the turtles have learned to fight blindfolded yet when he's actually blind he couldn't tell a thing. Um, he had his storyline with Casey Jones which was fantastic. I love the motorcycle scene. Uh, and then we got Donatello. Best episode ever. Same as it never was. Uh, where he goes to the future and realizes what it would be like if he's not with his brothers. And then we got Michelangelo. Some people would say his standalone episodes would be like Touch and Go, or Splinter has a one-on-one -on -one with him, or Graduation Day. I do not agree with either of those episodes. I think those episodes were just there to show that Mike's not a goofball, but by making it look like his family feels like he is. And by doing so, it downgraded who Mike is and just where he's coming from. The episodes that I think Michelangelo reflects off of who he is goes to the Turtle Titan episode and the Christmas episode. Those two episodes shows Mike being able to go out on his own, defend himself, take care of the business without calling for backup, 
and coming back home, okay, everything's fine. And it shows just where he wants to go with who he is. And it shows he does not need someone telling him what to do. Shows that he thinks things through and that he's a good fighter. Mike's character is way underplayed when he's with his brothers. Mike does that a lot on purpose. But that's just who Mike is, and that's another blog in itself. So they've got the characters down for the Four Kids series. Makes it all around with the story, the art, the characters. This show itself in whole is amazing. And there is some episodes I don't agree with. There's some episodes I love. There's definitely some storylines where I'm like, they didn't need it, but it's okay in there. I recommend the full series to everyone. Overall, this is one of the best shows that I've enjoyed of the Turtles, but I've also enjoyed the original series all the way through. I enjoyed The Next Mutation. I enjoy the movies, the comics. I ha have a love of the Turtles in whole. So every time I go into the series, I open it up as a new book. I don't consider them the same. And the Turtles Forever showed that they're not supposed to be the same. So if you're going to watch the 4 Kids series, watch it for what it is, not what everything else is. I'd like to thank those from 4 Kids for everything they've done for us. The writers who wrote these wonderful episodes, the directors who was able to direct the which way the artwork went and the voices, the artist for the wonderful work they did on all the artwork, I mean the storyboards are even amazing. And I'd like to thank the voice actors. I've got to know quite a few of the voice actors through conventions. So I'd like to personally thank Mike Central Nicholas, Wayne Grayson, John Campbell, and Sam Riegel for all the hard work, along with all the other wonderful voice actors, Scott Williams, Veronica Taylor, Mark Thompson, Mike Pollock. There's too many to list on here. Sean Shamil, Tom Whalen. I can keep going. I'm not going to. But just to say there is a lot of people who put a lot of effort into the series and made it what it is for all of us to enjoy. And I want to say thank you. But you were never designed to sort this out.